Hi, I'm Lois Barris at KZGN TV, and this is Ridgecrest Talk. And today I'm talking with Marla Hale, who is a fourth grade school teacher at Las Flores here in Ridgecrest. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you. I have been talking to people about parents that took their kids to school, the kids, how they felt at the first day of school, and now I'd like to just look a little bit into what the teachers go through to get ready for that first day of school. It's not quite as easy for you as it is for the kid to walk in there, is it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you start? Where you pretty much, pre it, it depends on your grade level, but for, I can speak from elementary, we start about a few weeks before. Okay, um, uh, officially? Oh no. Oh no, okay. No, no, it's on right. our time. <laughs> That's on your time, yeah. okay. But you've been teaching there for some time, haven't mm -hmm. you, at Las Flores? Twelve years. This will be my twelfth year, yeah. Twelve years, well, on school. That's yeah. cool. Same grade each time? Yep. Okay, does that help you with curriculum, or does that change, or? Um, curriculum stayed the same until we started Common Core. Okay. However, it's just been a switch up of what we're doing, but it's also how we're doing it. I was fortunate enough to be trained that way when I first came to, to Sierra Sands, because they made... Twelve years ago. Yeah, they wow. made new teachers go through this, I mean, new to the district, uh -huh. go through this, like, training, and it was teaching math with place value, and now Common Core expects it. So a lot of teachers are fumbling because they're forgetting, and I'm just so thankful I went ahead and taught it that way the whole time. Oh, you did? So it's just step back and go again? Yeah, I haven't time. had to transition much as far as that goes. Do you know going in what you're going to have to test for and all of that through the year or just the beginning of the year? Or how do you um, know as a teacher? Prior to Common Core, we were familiar. I mean, we would add things. They would add some things, but very seldom. Uh, when you've been doing it in the same grade, for the, it, it was great to really start pinning down. No, it changes because we adopt new uh, books and stuff over the years. But we pretty much know, we would, my colleague and I worked together all the time, so we really knew like what we needed to make sure they knew. Is your colleague same grade level? Yeah, we okay. worked together for nine years, but she retired two years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now you're back with someone new, sort of. But you only have your, each have your own classroom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just trying to get that ready. Yeah. I think it's interesting when we as parents walk in and there's this fantastic room all set up with pictures and everything for our kids. And that just doesn't just happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys have to put it together. They have to make it fit to the kids. And then I also have a thought. We're going to talk about all these as we go through the day. But I also have the thought of when she's sitting there with an empty room putting her stuff up, that's great. But then the first day of school when the kids show up, you don't even know their names, much less their level right. in whatever. Do you get anything that would show you what their past test scores or anything were? Or? Uh, we do get that, but not at first, eventually. Oh, okay. um, we get a little information. Most of the time, we don't, Common Core has changed a lot of things, so mm. we're all kind of in the dark on <laughs> okay. how this is going to go. <laughs> I get it. Um, okay. Before, yes, mm -hmm. our first okay. staff meeting we would have, and we would get to see how, just our grade level ranked, you know, where we ranked and everything with our grade level, like what percentages, and because that way we're more of a team, it's not individualized. I um, but with Common Core, we just don't know. And this was our first year of testing in it, so. Last year was. This, this past is. year, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So it's kind of like, we're Here not we sure. Go. <laughs> this is second time. Then you've got, how many kids do you usually have in your class? What's uh, an average? Our upper grade, fourth and fifth always have a minimum of, I mean, 32 is supposed to be the max, mm -hmm. and we always start out with 32. So you're going to have 32 pretty much. Oh, yeah. There. Okay. And um, sometimes we'll go up to 35, but that's a whole nother, we have to okay that, like, ah. they, you know, so there's Can been some Can you handle this many that. more kids, that sort of thing? Yeah, and it's, it's, we don't have room. I mean, that's the biggest part. Okay. I'm on wall to wall with kids, so. <laughs> yes, wow. You know. And these kids come in and they all have names, but you don't know them. No. <laughs> no. How do them? you have little tricks or something so you can remember because you're gonna say you there with the pink shirt, but shouldn't you say you there Judy or something? <laughs> how, how do you do that? Well, we don't get our class lists until the day before school starts. Really? Okay. And it, the, the parents come that night to see it's our ice cream social. We'll have just gotten the list. So we don't know who these kids are. Especially us, fourth and fifth were considered the upper grade. Oh, okay. So I really 
don't know many third graders, even though we do a little more with them than we used to, but I still know who they are. Mm -hmm. And so when they came in, it's kind of new names, I mean, unless I've had a, a sibling. Do you get people that would request to have your, you as? Yeah, there's a week where they can turn in requests. That's during the end of Last year, the like school they would year, have said, yeah. you had my older daughter and I'd love for you to have my son or something right. like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah that's really good. And, uh, you know, but it also depends on your child because both children could be different. Sure, learn differently. I was yeah. really request one of my, the group that graduated this year from high school, that year I had a daughter of one of the children and, um, but then a couple of years later, her, their son is totally different. So they requested my colleague for him, which we don't oh. care. We're no. we were She and I were always okay with that. Oh, that's great. Because we wanted the parents and the kids to be happy where they were. And to learn, yeah, with their best their best style. Mm -hmm. So if your colleague teaches differently than yeah. you do, then exactly. that would be good. So, so then you get this list All right. on the mm -hmm. day before you right. have kids. That must be a little bit ominous. Yeah. Um, do and you have? Do they try to do fifty fifty male and female, or does it just sort of get? Classes are classes are uh, put together based on a lot of aspects, gender, uh, level. Uh, high, low, depending on reading, math, um, oh, sure. and then also, you know, if they're uh, special ed, like have RSP, you know, mm -hmm. just need a little bit of resource, uh, if they're um, English language learners, because we have to balance it, and we have to make sure. it fair, you know, so there's a lot of things that go into that. We do that at the end of the year, usually, and then they'll be creating our class list again. They oh. recreate our list. Well, sure, because you may not even have the same kids. Right, and then you have those people that walk in the door. That okay. night. We're going to talk about this rolling. in just a little bit more, but right now we're going to go to break. We'll be back in about two minutes with Marla from Los Flores. You're back with Lois and Marla Hale, fourth grade teacher at Las Flores. We were talking about kids coming into your room and you not necessarily knowing their names or who they are or much about them at all. And will they for sure stay with you all year or how do you know what you're gonna have? We have uh, two week, the first two weeks, we're not, we're not supposed to put you know, name tags, uh, sticks or just different Why is that? Te techniques. Because um, they might, we might have 35 students walking in the door and then know that we're going to have to put some of those in another school. And so oh. we have to go two weeks before we can do that. So you're in there for two weeks with these kids. But and you don't have anything to really say, this is John or Judy yeah. or whatever. Wow. So what is your, you've got to have some trick or something. Do you? Yeah. Or? Fortunately, I have an excellent memory, so oh, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, and um, faces and stuff. Okay. So I play a little name game with them. Oh. Uh, we usually, a lot of teachers, that's what we do. We go over class management, that kind of thing. But then uh, that's when they're, they're fourth graders. They think, ooh, see what this is about. And they'll try to, you know, play a little games. Because they can, in my class, get a pick where they want to sit, unless what I tell them. Okay. If you're talking, I'll move you. So. But anyway, so what I do is I just start going off and then tell my name and then I'll just go like five kids and I'll say it, say it, say it. And then I'll add three more. And I just keep doing that all the way through and I get to all 32. Oh, wow. And sometimes, you know, I'm sitting there going, okay, like I and remember the names, <laughs> but I'm trying to remember, is that the right face? They're laughing, you know, uh -huh. and they'll tell you sometimes. It's like, don't tell me. Even yeah. if it takes me a minute. Let me work on it. And yeah. then once I've done that and I've been able to go through the entire class like twice, then I tell them, all right, I'm going to turn around. And then you've got to walk because I'm going to hear where you're moving around. And I will count to 10 and they can sit anywhere they want. And they can sit by whoever they want just to, I'll turn around and then I'll turn around and I'll start going through. And they love it because they're like watching to catch me. See, so, yeah, she didn't remember so, me. Yeah. Or she did remember me, one of the two. And I'll do that a few times. And uh, after the second time, they're really funny because they, they'll, they'll do it and they will switch hats. They will, they've picked up on that I'm no recognizing color uh, of okay. shirt, maybe the in whatever team they might have on their shirt, uh, just depends, brown hair, blonde hair, 
they've picked up on that pretty quickly. Oh. So then they're swapping hats. Oh my gosh. They'll even sometimes try to tuck their faces down. I'm like, no, <laughs> you have to show your face. Come on, let's be fair with me. <laughs> and That's uh, cool. I catch and then by, they're thinking, oh yeah, we got her. And I sometimes might pause, but I'll catch it and they're like, <gasps> and I go, okay, we'll do it one more time. And then they'll do it again. Oh, you know? how fun. And then that, that one's like kind of the, my assessment, I guess, from them to see, yeah. can she do this and then I will do it. And they were like, oh. And they were saying, wow, she's got that, she's good. So then then you've got a little bit of an upper hand as far as discipline too. Yeah, because I need Which is a, a good thing. Yeah, I from need a, to. From a happy standpoint. Yeah. You know, because they're enjoying that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I give them nicknames if they, you know, I don't know, something strikes me because we like to have fun in the class. Oh, okay. So like, we'll come up with like, especially when I have more than one name. Uh, more students oh, like with three the Johns same name. or something. Oh my god. Yeah, so right off, they're getting nicknames. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be John number the, right. the something. Or what right. do we call by their last name? Oh, or, okay. Like, one kid may have a cool last name, so I might call him with that last name, and then the other John would be like Johnny Bro. I don't know. Whatever comes to mind. And then uh, things like that. And the kids get really excited. They're always like, what's my nickname? What's my nickname? So How fun. fun. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. That's neat. I had a real silly nickname when I started school, and I'm not telling anybody. <laughs> but they probably wouldn't tell you either, so you make your own up, right? You're right. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is so cool. And then they get used to you. Mm -hmm. They call you Miss Hale. Mm -hmm. Good. Because I've heard so many children call their teachers like Marla. Really? Or and I, not so much in that grade, right? But as they get a little older, and, mm -hmm. and I think that's so disrespectful. That's my old, my old <laughs> style. But I just don't like it. I think it's great that they call you Miss Hale. Yeah. And then you have to set up groups and all that sort of thing for. Yeah, it depends on how we're going to run things uh, for the year. Uh, you know, it changes over time depending on our curriculum and everything. You have so. to have lesson plans for how long when you first begin. Mm, you have to be willing to be flexible. You okay. know, your lesson plans are made, but you're not going to get into a lot of curriculum your first week. You're okay. going to get into it. You're going to start it. You're going to get going. But you got to be flexible. They're just coming from third grade. They have one recess removed. <gasps> They're oh. having to go longer periods to lunch. There's a lot of these things. So. You have to be really flexible. A little in flexible and get them used to the routine, if nothing mm -hmm. else. Because to me, that's more important. I think so, because then as you get further along where you're really trying to, to impart information to them, they'll be more relaxed. Right. And they'll be more comfortable with the scenario of the day. Right. They're not going to say, it's time to go to recess. No, you don't get that second right. one, right? I always oh. tell them, guys, it's going to be hard, you know, mm -hmm. their first three weeks. Uh, and then the other thing we do, now, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the other thing we d I do is they have a color, different color folder for every subject, and they're oh. just so. Then that way, when we're doing work, they're putting it in that color, and then they, they that that's some of the things we do is making those folders, and then we have you, class the kids money. help you make them. I no, the folders are made. I buy them. You buy them, all. but the okay. kids have to put the what that folder is for in their name. Oh, okay. keep it in their desk. Because my thing is, it's to try to keep them organized mm -hmm. and also not have a ton of paper shoved in their desk, even though True. they do that anyway. Yeah, but I'll say, put it in your yellow folder and you'll have Sometimes they do and sometimes the they don't. Yes, that's great. But then you can always say, remember that homework we did? Well, it's in your yellow folder or whatever. Yeah, your writing Something folder, like your, your reading, whatever. whatever. Speaking of writing, just a quick off the wall, do you teach cursive writing? Yes, well, fourth grade didn't used to. They were supposed to have it in third grade. Okay. And when they got into fourth, um, we did for a while when mm -hmm. I first came to this district. But then we weren't really using it because they're supposed to have mastered it. I mean, okay. they're supposed to know their letters. I was just we curious. would just practice with words. And we found last year they didn't know their, in, they had not had any cursive. Mm. So I was in a bit of a panic because I was going to have to teach them cursive on mm. top of they have to write huge papers in fourth grade. The mm -hmm. transition from third to fourth it's is big. very large. Yes. And they go from five paragraphs to three pages. Mm. So, and we're talking intense stuff that we learn in college. Wow. It's it, it's hard. And it so it's changed a lot since to throw I was there. Learning cursive on top of that. So mm. and that was yeah, we're not I'm not really sure what happened this past year, like how they were okay. done in third grade. I was just curious but because I heard that sometimes they're not teaching it at all anymore and I didn't know what you guys did or not. Right. Well it is part of the curriculum. Okay, that's a good They do thing. want the kids to continue with the 
thing is, we use computers for everything now. That's right. So it's kind of a tough thing. Okay, we're going to talk some more about that in a little bit, but more about computers and programs and everything, <laughs> and we'll be back in about two minutes. Welcome back. You're back with our fourth grade school teacher, Marla Hale, and myself. And we were talking about all the things that she has to do. And I want to step back a little bit and talk about that prep work because way in the beginning, I mentioned this room that at the end of the year, you pack everything up and put it away. Right. Now you've got to come in and make it look like a school room again. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you get going on that and how you, because when the kids walk in and the parents walk in, you've got pictures and timelines and all sorts of stuff up. Tell me about how you get there. You know, you, you a lot of teachers change it up as they go. Um, it just depends on your grade level. Uh, but Grade levels do make a difference on what you have to prepare for. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So now I've never been a high school teacher, so I can't speak from experience, <laughs> but uh, I subbed plenty I in that for this long. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it is different for high school versus junior high versus elementary. So for high school, it's a it's a different. They don't have to worry about so much rooms. Like well, you've got one room, but you get different classes into the room, and you're basically teaching the same subject. Right. Where you've got four or five or six different subjects that you right. teach your children. And they are because yeah, they don't have to. Yeah, you know, they have some stuff up. They don't have to change boards every month or, right. or whatever, or year, you know, every year. Are you going to talk about something of writing and social studies and all that, and what they're going to put up something for English, mm -hmm. if you know, that sort of thing. Just it's a little one. different mm -hmm. pressure than a lower grade level would have. Yeah, and then you, you know, if you swing over, middle school's kind of half and half, and then you, when I say that, they, yes, they're teaching the subject, but they still are, got little, you know, they're fairly young, and, uh, and then elementary, you know, we are at fifth, uh, fit, fourth and fifth, we don't have to super decorate unless we choose to, but we do have to have specific, we need to have specific things up. So yeah, that comes down every year and we have to put it back up. But yeah. as you trail down into kindergarten, say, uh, my heart goes out to kindergarten teachers. Really? And I, yes, have done um. that. And those guys have to, uh, you know, those teachers, they have all my respect because a special they're teaching those, those kids folks. not just how to line up and walk in a line. Really? You know, they change bulletin boards literally every two weeks to mm. four because of what they're learning, what they're doing, what they're covering, what holiday. Their interest level even. Yeah, right. and they have to constantly, you know, because those kids, you have the, you're lucky if you have five minute time span. <laughs> So, yeah. you know what I mean? They're on a go, go, go. And you think about, so getting ready for school, I think about them, yes, they're doing the same things we are, but a little more intensive. But then I think of any teacher, no matter what grade, they've got kids because people forget they're human and they've got kids. <laughs> That's right, family. you've got your own house, your own kids, you're right. Yeah. yeah. And so if they have kids, they've got to get them ready for their school. And then they're also having to be, we're usually there a good week before school starts. So you go a week or so on your own dime, and then you go uh, officially a week or so before. Is that correct? No, no. We only get paid one day before school oh, starts. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, now my daughter days. teaches in Texas. She gets a week before. Oh. But uh, No, it's on us. Okay, it's on you. Yeah. But you've got to do it mm -hmm. for your own peace of mind. Can you right. imagine doing all that in one day? I can't. Oh. I just can't imagine. But they allow you to go into the school and, and mm -hmm. use their facilities and put stuff up and right. all that. Okay. And um, yeah, and I think of those parents, you think, well, if they've got little ones, say like mm -hmm. a first grader or a second grader, for kindergartner, they have to be in the room with them or with their parents. So mm -hmm. while the teacher's trying to get everything done and then they're attending to them and then we got lunch, you know, like I took them lunch or have lunch for them. Anyway, I can't imagine. And then when they're actually starting, when they're teaching, and that's got to be rough. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, and I don't care what grade level you're in, it's got to be it's, rough. It's, it's <laughs> the transition from playing all summer to actually going back to school is hard for the kids, too. And that's something else you guys have to rein in. This mm -hmm. is not just fun and games. We may do some fun, <laughs> but it may not all be fun anymore. Right. So you've got to get yourself back a little bit and, right. and yet make it enough fun for them that they aren't totally bored. So, right. Wow. What a step 
people, you've got to appreciate these teachers. <laughs> they do so much for you and for your kids. We were talking about programs, and sometimes you'll find a, an adult program or something that you think, wow, I could use that in my classroom. Have you ever done that? And then how would you transition that to your kids? Um, when you say an adult program, are you talking about like a curriculum, like something? No, like something we were, uh, I was talking about, uh, we're talking about budgeting. Okay. And you were trying to get oh. maybe get your kids to learn to budget and that sort of thing. Right. But that's not necessarily a fourth grade item, but you make it a fourth grade item. And how do you bring that back to your kids? Um, for me, I do class money. And most a lot of teachers will do that, especially in upper grades. Uh, and it depends on the teacher. I do class money, and the kids earn uh, money based on behavior, getting their work done, following directions, that kind of thing. I'll randomly do it. And then, of course, as the year goes on, you have to pay a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and then they also can be fined if they're uh, continually acting up. You know, I can find them and tell them go put the money in the bank. So it can cover all of their day, actually, that one activity, only just little pieces of it. Yeah, and you're the teaching, day. they've learned money in their other grades, okay. but they're actually touching it, holding it. And it's realistic. We go. For, I only go from a dollar. The most they'll ever get is fifty, and that's kind of like a rare thing. A way big one. So, yeah. but they make money folder, and they know they keep it in their desk because if it gets taken, and then we work on like we even talk about budgeting. And if they get fined enough and lose all of their money, we have a debt sheet. <gasps> so then they have to go put themselves in debt. And so every time they get, earn any money, they have to put it on the debt. So as soon as they get the money, they got to put it in the bank. And then they can Lower subtract that debt. from their debt. And oh, wow. So then you really work at trying to find ways to get um, them to earn back their money. Because if they're really trying. Could be fun for them, but right. it's also a little frightening. Because now what do I do to make money? And they really so. get the idea. And then we do auctions. Okay. So you'll have that kid who will wait till the very, we have auctions all year. And they'll wait till the very end of the year and have like $5,000 or something mm. crazy. It doesn't always end up being that much. But, yeah, you know, somewhere like 1000 it could be. Because they've been auctioned all year. Okay, we're down to one minute. So let's wrap this up and tell me what you think the teacher needs to tell the parent to get them on your page. Uh, following up on homework, uh, talking to your teacher, it's so important. We really do care. You really want them to talk to you. Right. I okay. mean, I love when a parent wants help or just, just wants to, to know what's me. going on. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's things I don't know mm -hmm. that help. And also the mo the parents have the best they know their child better. Sure they do. So they can yeah. say, you know, this is how they react. Oh, didn't know that. Yeah. Thank you. But now I can work around that and help mm -hmm. their student better. So yeah. parents, you need to cooperate with your teachers. And do you ever get help from parents? If we, I did, I used to, but <coughs> not so much anymore. But I mean, help in the way of support, mm -hmm. absolutely. Oh, that's wonderful. But they can't come into class because everybody's working now. Okay. Most of the families are double. Well, we just about did this. I think we could talk for another 20 <laughs> minutes or so. But thank you so much for coming. And mm -hmm. parents, work with your teachers, and the kids will come out much better for it. And we appreciate you teachers so much. Thank <laughs> you for being here. Thank you.